Hello everyone. This video is about Persian Bible antenna. Hertz was the first one who discovered the existence of the electromagnetic wave from the Maxwell equations. And he also um, he was also the one who failed the experiment, similar because the antenna he used was too small. This was the original antenna used by Hertz. It was uh, uh, just two pieces of wire. And that's why it is called dipole. And the wire is uh, fed by a AC current source. And he managed to detect the, the, um, the, electromagnetic, the power from the electromagnetic magnetic wave from over a very very short distance and that's how he proved uh, the, um, the how he validated maximum equation but on the other hand um, he could not follow he could not transmit the energy to the far end simply because of the, the length of his yeah uh, antenna and this is so called Hertzian dipole antenna. And in antenna engineering, we are going to make use of his own antenna and uh, we further develop um, the linear dipole antenna and with much better efficiency. So, before going forward, we need to go through some of the important assumptions for his own antenna. First, it is very small. So the length of the antenna, the total length here, uh, should be much less than the wavelength, yeah? Uh, lambda divided by 50, uh, which is a small value. And it is even better, larger than the length. So, uh, 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 perhaps your wavelength is that much, but your, your antenna could be just really tiny. Another thing that we have assumed is uh, the wire is uh, infinitesimally thin, very thin. So in other words, the diameter of the wire here is uh, two r. Uh, r is the radius. 2R is much, much less than uh, the, uh, the total length. This means uh, uh, it's much, 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 much less than lambda. Uh, another thing that we have to have shown here is um, between the upper wire segment and the lower wire segment, there's a little gap here. And we have to have shown that the gap here is very, very small. So in actions, if the gap here is sufficiently small, then the whole antenna itself can be considered as a, a single piece of wire segment, a continuous piece of wire segment. Uh, so uh, these are the assumptions we have made. Right? Uh, one, two, three. Right? Uh, uh, number four is not important. Number four is important to number two. And the way how we solve the problem is um, we are going to use um, so-called magnetic vector potential, which we have learned from the previous chapter. And we use the magnetic vector potential to work out the magnetic field first. And then we are trying to, we will use the um, uh, some simple techniques to uh, find the electric field. And so before going forward, let's revise what we have learned in the uh, magnetic vector potentials chapter. And we learned that uh, the magnetic vector potential here is um, 
is given by um, a oh yeah a is the magnetic vector potential being equals to mu over four pi uh, and then a volume integral and then three uh, and then uh, uh, R minus R pound, and we need to find the magnitude of this, and D V pound. So this is the whole formula for the magnetic vector potential. Now, A of R here is the magnetic vector potential. And now, based on the assumption we have got, yeah, the uh, second assumption, the diameter wire, the diameter of the wire is very thin. And in this expression, uh, the top expression here is J D V pound. Yeah, we have V pound is the volume. The volume of the um, of the metal, uh, the volume of the metal uh, where the current is flowing. Okay, uh, so V is itself uh, V in itself so it is a volume. The volume is given by J uh, uh, say S times L. Uh, suppose we are now considering a little wire segment here. Just need two sections, okay? DL, DL. And S is the cross sectional area. The cross sectional area might be equal to. Uh, or maybe I uh, R square pi, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's the cross sectional area. area of the wire, okay? So, uh, JS itself is the current density times the area. So everyone knows this, this amount is going to be the current, the L. Uh, so in other words, uh, the Magnetic vector potential given in this equation can be written as A equals to mu for pi. Uh, by the way, I, I prefer to use the letter back. Yeah, just to indicate that uh, it is a uh, vector. Um, and in this case, uh, originally, we are dealing with the volume integral, but because of this, and because of our, of our assumption, the diameter of the wire is uh, infinitesimally small. So in this case, uh, we can just uh, say this guy is now become, becoming the nine integral uh, with I, L, D, L. On the top, and then the R minus uh, R pound. So I'm going to comment on this bottom expression later. And how about the limit of the integral? J so, uh, the length here is L L. We can just assume uh, it is a combination of two half. Uh, so we have one over L here and one over L. On the bottom. So this is the antenna that we are going to deal with. So minus uh, L divided by 2 and L divided by 2. And on the other hand, we are now uh, having an antenna uh, and the antenna is radiating 
the far field, and we consider the far field only. And let's assume that uh, we have a uh, destination, we have a receiving end at a very, very far location. Yeah. Uh, right now, we uh, uh, is not to the same scale. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a radiation uh, from the cape here, uh, and this one here, and this one here. Yeah. And, and we, if we consider the far field only, uh, then uh, from the microscopic point of view, the radiation coming from everywhere on the antenna is basically parallel. And the radiation itself so is literally a path, a pen wave. Uh, so uh, the, uh, um, considering the far view only, Yeah, the radiation from every corner of the uh, antenna is basically a pan wave. The radiation uh, from the antenna is is basically a, is a pan wave. So this is another point we need to highlight. And another thing that I, in order, the, the another thing that we want to solve is uh, the magnetic vector potential. And now uh, we have a bottom expression, uh, R minus R pump. Uh, so if you remember clearly from the BRS sequence, from the BRS chapter, it is uh, uh, R, Palm and R, and the so called R minus R prime is this one here. So it's basically a, a level of complication. So why don't we just absorb R palm is zero and R is pointing upwards? So in this case, uh, the antenna is, uh, is basically a piece of wire. And what we are going to do is absorb the antenna is located right at the origin. So uh, in a three-dimensional system, we are going to action. Uh, here is the Z-axis. Z-axis, OK? Uh, and the horizontal axis is Y-axis, like that. And we also have another axis, right, which is the X-axis. Uh, so this is the B-dimensional system that we are considering. And now we have shown, we finished the material here. So in this case, given the, this assumption, we may just consider that uh, R minus R pound, right? Uh, the R prime is zero. So eventually, what we get here is uh, something divided by R, which is a real value, a magnitude of the radius. So R here is the distance from the origin, uh, from the antenna to the far location. Uh, so this is the uh, so-called R. So we have to write down something here. Uh, where uh, R is the distance uh, uh, between the antenna and and the um, location and the um, 
receiving and now um, by area row, if you have a current going uh, this way, uh, current, right? You got the current going this way. Then uh, you should expect uh, by MPRO, you should expect the magnetic field uh, circulating this wire. Uh, if you look at the microscopic wall point of view, so we will have uh, some sort of magnetic field like this. So this is what we are going to expect. And if there is any magnetic uh, vector potential, it will be within the wire. So the magnetic vector potential will be like this. Inside, inside the wire. And now uh, if this is the case, uh, you should expect uh, in a far location and we will have a direction going in or out of the plot. And this one will be the magnetic field, B5. And in this three-dimensional system, uh, we have to find out the angle. Uh, say the angle here is uh, the polar angle, theta. And if you, uh, in this uh, uh, location, yeah, the destination, if you write down the projection, the perpendicular projection here, and then connect it to the origin. And we have a right angle at the foot of this projection. And the angle here will be phi. Then this is the maximum one, maximum angle. And this is what the uh, three-dimensional rocket system looks like. And I've shown that I less I be. I know where K is the um, the wave vector. The wave vector is the wave number given by K equals to 2 pi over lambda. So eventually, uh, this expression here will be expressed in radian. Uh, so uh, this expression here will give out the uh, uh, sending wave characteristic. Okay. Uh, at this stage, we can substitute the um, assumed expression for i into equation two. So substitute three into two. And what we are going to get here is a being equal to four pi uh, and then uh, L divided by 2 minus L divided by 2. And then I, right, what well, we have to write down the expression here. J, K, uh, R, and then divided by R and DL. And uh, based on our original assumption, uh, they, Hertz antenna is an uh, extremely small unit, uh, infinitesimally small compared to the wavelength. And in, in this case, uh, the length here uh, will be independent of the radius and independent of the electric field uh, R. Uh, so L is independent of. Ah, uh, uh, so it doesn't matter what kind of length you have here. 
the radiation field at the far end will not be uh, significantly changed. So in other words, uh, uh, R here has nothing to do with L, then you can just move the whole expression out. Uh, uh, anything, anything here can be moved out. So what you end up with here, what you have can do here is uh, 4 pi. And then uh, the bottom expression will be like this, uh, the top expression. And then what you have left is the integral here. DL. And obviously, the value of the integral is going to be L. Uh, so uh, if this is the case, then uh, you don't need to work too much first. What you need to do is to just simplify the expression on the front. Uh, so this is the magnetic vector potential for the Hertz and Dipo antenna. And the next thing is uh, is to find the magnetic field based on based on uh, this formula. Uh, the curl of A is equal to the magnetic field B. And this is the next step. And remember, we are now dealing with a uh, uh, spherical coordinate system. And under this system, uh, we need to find the curve of A. So B is equal to the curve of A, right? so uh, it is going to be A R A beta and A I. Mm. R square sine beta. And this one is R sine beta and this one is R. And Uh -huh. And the bottom one. And this one. No. Oh. Everything is now under control. So this is going to be uh, the formula uh, for curl of A. And AR here is the um, the R component of the A vector. E beta is the beta component of the A vector. Yeah. And A5 is obviously the uh, this is a component, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's continue. And before going forward, we need to know that uh, the magnetic vector potential A is being used to uh, A Z. And what is A Z? A Z is being equal to well, A uh, A R cos theta minus A 
A theta sine theta. So uh, uh, the vector A here, uh, the magnetic vector potential can be written as two components uh, based on what we have got here. So, so this is the equation one, two, three, D, uh, and this one is the uh, same. Uh, four and we substitute four. E into P and what we are going to get is here. Uh, A is magnetic vector potential and we have a big chunk of expression. Uh, we have uh, mu L and then uh, um pi naught and then four pi uh -huh. and then and then uh, the vector here the vector here is given by a r cos theta minus a theta sin theta so if you further expand it, what you are got, what you are going to get is uh, mu L I naught, and then four pi. Now we don't need to do anything at this stage. We can do it later. Now, uh, uh, the next thing that we are going to do is to short this. this this determinant. Before going forward, we need to identify which terms can be cancelled off to simplify the expression. Uh, so first of all, uh, we know the uh, so-called uh, potential is uh, somewhere along the wire. So in this case, uh, uh, if there is any potential, what so-called A5, uh, then this one is going to be zero. A5 on the street, so there should not be anything A5. And another thing is, uh, 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 the range rate of, in the direction of phi, uh, phi is this angle. And we know that the magnetic field will be circulating around the wire. Yeah, by MPS law, by right hand screw law. Uh, so this is your magnetic field. And uh, uh, this circulating pathway um, is somewhat like this, where the ambiguous at any point along this circulating pathway will be the stem. So in other words, the derivative uh, of, of anything against the derivative of uh, phi should be zero. So this one is going to be zero as well. So what we have left here is a very simplified ex expression. Uh, say if this is the equation uh, four, what this is equation five. So phi from phi which is the formula of the um, uh, magnetic field. B is going to be uh, this guy here, uh, divided by R, and this one here. And minus this one here. And A theta is the theta component of A. A is the magnetic vector potential. And AR here is the uh, R component of A. Uh, 
All these things can be found from this expression. Say, now right, we have this equation, so this is equation 6. And we are going to find out uh, everything from there. So if you work out this expression carefully and find out this thing, what you will find out here will be uh, will be a uh, 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 let me see if I have enough space here. This one is a uh, volume, you can see the version, we put it like this. Uh, so the first thing that we know is the R component. Yeah, we better write this down. Uh, so AR, uh, uh, maybe we are going to clean up this area. It's messy, isn't it? A R. Uh, we just take extract the R component. R component, right? This is uh, the univector pointing in the R direction. So what you will get this thing modified cosine theta. So this is uh, AR, and do not forget that you need to highlight the direction. And how about uh, E beta? According to what we have got here, right, it is a sine beta multiplied by this term. Uh, but do not forget, you have a minus sign here. Right? You, have to, you have to pay attention to this thing. Okay, the next thing that we are going to do is to find out the expression here. And uh, right now, right, we are going to simplify this expression on the fly. We uh, move the R into the bracket and put it here. And this is going to be equation 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we are going to substitute this into equation 7. Now, uh, we first need to find this term. So if you work out carefully, uh, what you will end up with here is something like uh, J. Okay, I just have to improve the handwriting. So another expression uh, to be considered is here, yeah. 
And based on what we can get from here, uh, the event rate from against this beta, then we will have a minus sign at the end. Uh, so uh, you will get L I naught or pi R. Uh, and this one will become sign theta. Uh, so this is the case. So basically uh, you have two uh, basically the same expression. Now the next thing that we are going to do is to combine these two terms. So this is the equation A. And we are going to uh, substitute equation A into 7 and see what we are going to get. The magnetic field B is going to be right, somewhat like this, but we have already worked this out. Oh, A. Oh, so if you work out carefully, uh, what you will get end up with here? Oh, uh, A uh, five, oh, and then oh, U L I. Uh, no, and divide up by uh, 4 pi. And same joint. Sign theta. And the uh, J, K, R, and then plus R square. So this is the final expression for the magnetic field. And uh, if you are considering the far field only, then uh, uh, 1 over R square should be 0, or should be approximate as 0. So uh, eventually, you can shrink the expression to somewhat uh, like this one here. Yeah. So let's continue. Let's continue that. B, which is the magnetic field here, yeah? consider the far field only. One over R square to be zero. And in this case, B is And then you L I not and then divided by four pi. Oh, put R here. And uh, uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to multiply J K. Yeah. So J K. Uh, So this is going to be the approximate expression. And do not forget that the angle here uh, is, is what? A pi. Now, we have already got the uh, the magnetic field 
Well, the magnetic view is pointing yeah, in the far direction. And we have to find the electric field as well. And we have to uh, understand the fact that uh, if the direction here is R, then the electric field is going to be orthogonal to the magnetic field. So uh, the electric field will be E theta, yeah? The only term that is left for the electric field should be E, e theta, E of theta. Uh, uh, again, uh, this is the case. Uh, now, uh, remember, uh, E uh, is equal to uh, the B view divided by uh, mu and then times the characteristic impedance. And the direction is going to be the axis will be uh, A theta. And this guy here is going to be mu over epsilon. And B divided by this guy here is going to be J K L I theta. Uh, the mu has been cancelled off and you can form pi r. Yeah. And again, so you need to uh, write this and then times. So this is going to be the uh, formula for the electric field, and this one is going to be the magnetic field. Or the Hertzian dipole. We have already found the electric field and magnetic field. Um, what else do we need to do? Apparently, right, this is what we are calling, what we are expecting to get. Um, okay, uh, if you have any question, please leave your questions to the comments box. Uh, this is what we are going to get. And in the next lectures, we are going to derive a formula for the halfway dipole. And our halfway dipole formula will be based on the result that we have got in the Hertzian dipole antenna. And if you have any question, then please leave your question to the comments box. Uh, otherwise, just say bye-bye.